G'day, fellas. And welcome to Outback Octagon number two. This is the first game in Outback Octagon 2 that we will be witnessing. And boy, have we got an absolute cracker for you. This map is Uluru, named after the sacred site in Australia, the largest rock on the entire planet. Let's introduce our players. In the 12 o'clock position, on the Holy Roman Empire, in the color pink, it's Louis MT. Two minutes of trading remain on the east corner. Playing in the color orange as the Chinese. Don Arty. To his south in the color green. Playing as the Rus. It's Recon. Very close to him on the south in the color teal. Playing. As the Abbasid Dynasty, it's Snooper. To his west in the red. Playing as the Ottomans, it's Casper. To his south in the dark blue. Playing as the French, Anatand. In the west corner. Playing on his English, Divine DFP. And last, but not least, in yellow, on the Holy Roman Empire, it's Lucifron. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Uluru. Uluru, famous for its heritage, a beautiful map, a plateau in the middle, and a single sacred site. Hold this sacred site for 10 minutes, and you become king. Well, I mean, you win the game. I don't know whether you become king. And speaking of king, well, take a look here in the north of the map as we've got our first king out. It's Louis MT. He's on the prowl. He's got a beautiful little spawn up here. When it comes to the way that this map spawns, for whatever reason, a lot of the resources spawn down on the south side. You can see we've got pl plenty of gold down here. Lots of forests. And naturally, it looks like players have flocked down towards this south side of the map. Five of eight players all down towards this position. After three minutes, the treaty is over. And now players are able to fight, to kill each other, to hurt each other, to do all the bad stuff that they probably shouldn't be doing. So, if we had to pick favorites, if I had to pick someone at the beginning of this game and said, I reckon this guy's got the best chance of winning the game, I'm gonna have to give my money to Divine. He's playing the English, a civilization that we have casted him on many a time. This guy absolutely loves the English. And he's got such a spawn over here, over on this west corner, that he's just such a very, very quiet one. He's got gold, but not a whole lot of gold, but he doesn't really need a lot of gold because he's English. It's an absolutely beautiful spot for him. If I was to put my money on the most kills this game, it's got to be Kaspar. I have seen Kaspar just go absolutely wild through these games. Donati. Donati also another big threat in this game. So, so many big threats in this game. It is a completely ta stacked tournament. I'm incredibly excited to be able to bring this first game. And I guess we should probably address the elephant in the room. There is no Delhi. Nah, I'm just kidding. Hopefully there's no desyncs. That's what I'm scared of. I'm incredibly scared right now of a desync. If a desync happens, we do have a plan B. We've talked about it before. So essentially 20 minutes is the cutoff. If a desync happens post 20 minutes, that's it. We just run with it. If it's before 20 minutes, then we have to look at a, a redo, a refix. Take a look at this already. Anatan going to be pulling out the boar, bringing a couple of villages over. Going to be able to clear this out early. Early on in this event though, not a whole lot of aggression coming out. Fortunately, all the players have managed to find space. Scout almost going down. Eight health remaining on that, that scout. So I, th I think, realistically, there's the potential that this game may go for quite a long time. A lot of players are very happy with their spawns. 
I, I know that Divine would be happy with his. Louis would be happy with him. His even Lucifron. Just the fact that he's this far up away from everybody else, he's going to be happy with that. And I think Don is probably going to be the happiest with his, because I've got a suspicion he's going to run a stone wall all the way across from here, down across the face of his town center to the edge of the map, and claim all of this, all of this for himself. So many resources in this little east pocket. Let's talk a little bit about how some of these matchups might happen. We do have Casper very close to Anatan. And Anatan on the French. He's going to be looking to get out early, aggressive. At the same time, you've kind of got Snooper caught a little bit between a rock and a hard place. Now, keep in mind, he does have a, himself a little bit of a problem in that he is landlocked. He can't move. Now, remember that civilizations are tied to their kings. You're not tied to your landmarks anymore. However, the Abbasid dynasty, as a civilization, is still technically tied to its House of Wisdom. If it loses the House of Wisdom, it no longer has the ability to age up. Whereas if you lose your council hall as the English, big whoop, then all of a sudden you can't make longbows. It's, it's, not, that it's not that bad of a deal. But the first of the age ups is coming through. It's going to be the Arkan chap will drop down. Beautiful Arkan as well. He's going to be able to pull the boar in and you know he's going to do it. He's got access to the prelate. I wouldn't be surprised if he looks to heal up the prelate. We'll heal up the, the villagers with the prelate. Beautiful little spot. Another Arkan Chapel up towards the north. Another great spot. Hits the TC, hits the gold, hits the double wood. Now, one thing to note about this map is that the wood spawns are not large wood spawns. They are all small wood spawns. Means that there's significantly less wood on this map than a normal map of this side. But we already start to see the battle lines getting drawn. Now, I will just give a shout out right now to our map creator, Bidolin. Huge shout out to Bidolin. Bidolin's put in a lot of hard work for doing these maps. The first interaction I ever had with Bidolin was when he did our map creation competition. And if I remember correctly, he didn't win a single prize in that competition, even though I thought his maps were, were genuinely the best ones. He didn't win a single prize, but I, I will say now, he may have won the greatest prize of all, which was actually employment from the developers. They looked at his maps and they said, we love his maps so much, we want him to come make maps professionally. And well, the rest is history. So you, I, I guess I'm talking about forgotten empires, Biddlin. But anyway, so a huge shout out goes out to Biddlin. And of course, a massive shout out as well goes out to Woproc, who has created the Outback Octagon 2 mod for us to play on. He's done his best to get rid of all the bugs and he's he's assured me that everything is up to scratch. So, Woproc, thank you very much for your hard work as well. And of course, it's it's the first game. We probably shouldn't get... We sh shouldn't be thanking everybody. Mum, thank you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, uh, no, but seriously, Mum, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Dad, thank you. Um, who else? God? Gotta thank God. You know, it's, it, if, we're, if we're doing speeches, we gotta be thanking people, but... What is going on with that dead villager? That's a bit of an awkward spot. Kremlin's actually down here, and this is an aggressive Kremlin that's been placed. Recon. Drawing battle lines already. Obviously, another big shout out just to our admins, Mr. Merlin and Lord Potato. Now, let's move on. Let's move forward. And let's focus on what is happening. West corner. Council Hall coming up for Divine. He's very chilled out. No second town center, at least just yet. Still scouting himself out. Up towards the north side. Scouting. You can, you can see how these players are looking to post up. Now, keep in mind, all those relics are going to be in the middle. But one thing to note is we don't have Ottomans here. There is no Ottoman players. The first knight is out. We've got villager kills on the south side. Snooper losing the first of the villagers. Anatan going to be taking them out. Looking to begin gaining control early on in this matchup. Villagers having to pack their bags, head to the other side, and you can see how difficult Snooper's position is here. Stuck between a rock and a hard place. What's his option? I think he falls back. I think that's probably the best way to do it, is like try and play on the back like this, but you can see just how well these knights are moving. Up towards the north, plenty of sheep with one of those scouts, and Divine now reaches the Feudal Age as well. So everybody up to the Feudal Age. Divine taking it a little bit slowly, 10 minutes. I wouldn't, be I wouldn't be surprised if Divine goes into like 5 TC English here. Speaking of TCs, Casper throws down a second TC and Lucifron 
Already clicking up to the third age. He's going to be our first player going towards the castle age. More knights making their way across to the east side. Remember, the first king that is killed... Oh, gosh. I, I hate to say it, Snooper. The first king that is killed in this game will be awarded an extra point. And look at this. Deleting. Deleting all of the buildings just to try and escape so that the knight doesn't know where those villages are. So the, the first king that goes down this game will have extra points awarded to it. So normally it's just one point for a king kill. It will go up to two. Uh, and if you kill them in the feudal age, you will get an, an additional third point. And look at Anatan with the aggressive town center here. So damn aggressive. Poor Snooper. He is really having a tough time. And you can see that up towards this top side, that Recon's starting to wall off against Don. Don doesn't want to fight. Don's 2TC Song Dynasty hat. He's having the time of his life. Throwing down the archery ranges. Look at the Don. He knows what is up right now. He's going to be moving into Juku Nu. Ram pushes, I'm suspecting. Beautiful stuff from the Don, but take a look at this in the middle of the map. Lucifron with the age up. First of the relics in position. Regnitz Cathedral coming in as well from Louis. Both of the Holy Roman Empire players in the north of the map, and it's going to be a relic snag away. Lucifron picks up the first one. Louis got relics or got... got uh, <laughs> look at these Holy Roman Empire players just camp camping all of these, all of the relics. First of the Walla Lols comes in. Might actually... No, uh, it's going to be close, but I don't think he gets them. He doesn't. No, no, it wasn't even close. Two. Three. Four relics on the way right now for Louis. He's got four in the bag. Now, keep in mind, there's plenty more relics out here. You can hear, hear them all getting picked up. He's looking to try and pick this one up. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him come out to heal, and I think that's what Louis is going to look to do here. Uh, keep in mind, there could be knights coming through. A little bit delayed on the knights from Lucifron, but... Let's ride in on the south side of the map as Snooper is trying his best to keep his head above water, but unfortunately, not the best spawn for him. Berries were very far away from him. If he knew about these berries on this top plateau, things might be a little bit different. But the relic numbers are starting to climb. Louis with one, Lucifron with two in the bag. You can see that reflected on the UI. Now, I will also... Actually, somebody I'm, I, I, I missed out hugely. Can I just thank right now Kush? Who created the UI? Of course. How, how could I forget Kush? Kush, how could I forget you? How could I forget that? Nice little hand over right here. You can see Lucifron's prelate standing by. So for anybody wondering about this beautiful UI, this was created by Kush, uh, who has dedicated a huge amount of time and effort into making and bringing this vision to life. But the first of the knights is out. But hold the horses. We've got additional knights coming out. And this is where the battle lines are now being drawn. Not, be not with walls, but with relics. Relic numbers continue to increase. Louis still on one. Lucifron on two for the moment. And Knight's going to be coming out and clashing in the center. Louis going to be looking to try and deal with this prelate before it makes its way any further over. We can see plenty more Knights coming out. And a single prelate in the middle of the map could be looking to take that sacred site. So all relics in the center now going over towards these Holy Roman Empire players in the north. The relic goes down once again. It's going to need to bring out additional prelates. Let's see what he, what he aims to do. A couple more prelates in the middle. He's managed to snag how many relics? One, two, three, four. Not a bad haul. But obviously with Lucifron so close by, you're going to be in trouble. Let's check in on that south side. Blacksmith coming down a whole bunch of archers. And Don Artie with the Juku Numas starting to build. Kings hanging out in town centers for the moment. Age up comes through for Divine. He's gone 2TC Fast Castle, just like a 1v1 game. I actually played him earlier. He did the exact same thing. 2TC Fast Castle. Uh, and, uh, it, it doesn't surprise me in the least. But, you know what does surprise me? Don Artie going for Juku Nu. This is a unit that he hates. I remember there was a time when Don Artie would play against the Chinese. He would just resign. He's like, I, I, it's Chinese, just resign. Now it's the Malians. Now he doesn't play against the Malians. He just resigns against them. Snooper. Oh, poor Snooper. And th th I think the worst thing for Snooper right now is that because he's the Abbasid dynasty, he just can't ditch his base. If he ditches the base... So right now, he, he, hypothetically, he could try and move to somewhere else on the map. You know, there's a there's a nice little spot up here, pretty open. No gold, but he could. Go for it. The king could get out there, get on the move. Oh, 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 oh. Here we go. Here we go. King on the move. And if the king goes on the move... Did the king jump back inside? He did. Uh, he can potentially just evacuate the base. Yeah, he loses the landmarks, but just remember, landmarks, they don't really mean a whole lot in this game mode. Is he, is he migrating? Is that what we've got? Have we got a migration coming through? Recon. 
in trouble on this north side. Triple Ram coming in. Don Artie using the 2TC Song Dynasty into the triple archery range build. Immediately looking for this town center. This could be trouble already for Recon. He's starting to build up a pretty decent force. But the king is on the move. King is on the move. Ladies and gentlemen, king is on the move. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've, uh, I've got a son who, who doesn't, who, for anyone who doesn't know, he's nine months old. And um, when he was in the womb, he would always be kicking and, and screaming and punching. And we'd always say to each other, baby on the move, baby on the move. Well, you got king on the move, but you got problems right now, Snooper. Don't do it like this, Snooper. Having trouble in paradise. And you can see the king. He's trying his best to get back to the town center. Needs to keep himself alive. And he manages to do so at the same time up towards the north. It looks like we've got more battles happening. It's night on night action. But plenty of prelates in the rear. But Don Artie might be coming through with the first kill of the game. Keep in mind, he's in the feudal age. Feudal age is going to attract that extra point for the first kill. Not just for the first kill, but just for any kills. You can go kill seven people and you get extra points for them all. Chukunu moving forward. He's found the king. He knows the king is inside the Kremlin. And look at this! All the battering ramps heading over towards the Kremlin. He's got to be so careful in this position. There's there's an opportunity to be had right here. At the same time, where is that king? Where is that enemy king? Snooper in trouble at, on the south side. And you can see that Recon's just going to start sieging down the town center. He wants to get a kill. He's going for the first blood, but Don Artie's not going to let him. He is taking out this first game. He's trying to take out right now Recon. Four rams attacking through this Kremlin. The king needs to make a run for it. If he does it, he's up against Chukunu. They've got their plus one. There's the king. Go, king. Don Artie with the snipe. He gets blocked out. <laughs> he gets blocked out. Don Artie not camping the front door. And unfortunately, Recon able to escape with the king to the back. And still more villagers coming up. You can see how hard he's committing to try and get this first kill. Wants to just get a couple points on the board. Remember that this is a point system right now. Oh, Don Artie with a huge mistake. And now the town center is going to be the main focal point for him. Still plenty of battering rams in here. We see him working down the Kremlin up towards that north side. Night numbers building up for both of our Holy Roman Empire players. Meanwhile, on the west side of the map, how are you guys doing? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, me too. Yeah, everyone's good. Yeah, we're all good. Oh, no. Oh, Snooper. Just when you thought you were fine. Just when you thought, oh, yeah, this is okay. Don's got me covered. Mm -mm -mm. Don might have you covered from the north, but he doesn't have you covered from the south. And Snooper is in trouble. Don having an absolute field day out here. Chukunu numbers have fallen, though. Not a lot of Chukunu. He's down to seven. He's managed to pick off seven Chukunu. Is Don rallying more? He needs to get all of these Chukunu in. But still, we see the Kremlin is, is surviving. Town Center under pressure. We've got two early threats right now happening. And the Town Center is going to go down, but there's nothing here to kill the King. Reinforcements coming in. Recon brings a couple units back. King comes in on the front side. Manages somehow to pop out the top. And now he's on the move. The King is on the move. You can see he's got seven ranged armor. Oh my Lord, I don't remember approving that. <laughs> oh God, King. Oh, rest in peace. Ladies and gentlemen, Anatan has assassinated Snooper. Rest in peace, little guy. It was a pleasure getting to know ya. And the King is on the move. Recon now looking to escape to the country. A sad state of affairs for the Snoop Dogg. Now, I will just note to everybody, you will see in the top right-hand corner of my screen that that is the chat. That is the in-game chat. Sometimes it appears as a forest, which is what it will be showing as right now. And that's because Snoop has been eliminated. All right. That, that is that is a lot of armor. And yes, I, I did approve it. I can see Woprock in the chat saying, actually, Drongo, you did approve that. It's like, oh yeah, okay. I probably did approve that. I just didn't think about the ramifications with these poor Chukunu. And you can see right now, Recon just on the run here, trying his best to, to keep himself alive up towards the north side. Numbers building up for both of these Holy Roman Empire players. It is a standoff between these two. They're looking to try and keep the numbers up. Upgrades still yet to come through for either of these players. And now the king completely surrounded, but he's got the movement speed breaking through the back line. Look at the king, he's on the run. All the knights coming through. Keep in mind the knights have got melee, uh, have got melee damage here. So he could look to try and come through for the snipe, but it doesn't look like it's going to get through. Donati assassinates Recon. And now we've got two players out early on in this game. We come close to that 20 minute threshold. Remember we spoke about it earlier in the event that there's a desync before it. We head back to the drawing board. We start all again and we say, well, desync players, you're back in. But once we hit that 20 minute mark, any chance of a desync, and it means that we are just rolling with it. And the desync players, unfortunately, that's how the cookie crumbles. And well, there's only so much we can do with the spaghetti that we've been delivered. Down towards the south side though. We've, we've got trouble in paradise as Casper has decided, well, you were aggressive early on. So uh, now I'm gonna be aggressive. Villagers on the backside. There's 16 of them. The Knights are looking for a surround. The keep is gonna be going down. The king is locked inside the keep. Meanwhile, 
on the west side of the map. Somebody sits and waits as the Berkshire Palace comes up. King jumps out. King looking to try and survive. This is only a hardened king. Wait, was, was the... Oh, the, th that was... Oh, no wonder. I was trying to work out why it had so much ranged armor. It was because it was a, a, a castle age king here. And look at the king on the run, sprinting away from the pack. He says, see you later. He puts the Nos on and he's on all out of there. But you can see the knights looking to follow right now. He's trying to get a good block in. Manages to do it. The meta's here with the pack at the same time. More reinforcements coming in. The king is under pressure, looking to escape to the second town center. And it looks like it might come through as well. Good little escape right there. Manages to make his way over, escapes the knights from Casper. And Casper, whoop, up towards the north. We've got more fights happening. Meanwhile, east side of the map. And Don Hardy says, hmm, farm economy. Well, don't mind if I do. Now, after 21 minutes, decides it's time for a castle age. Keep in mind, once he gets to the castle age, any subsequent kills that he gets... Only going to be awarded one point. That's how we motivate people to attack each other early rather than to just say, you guys want to be friends? Because if, if they say that to each other, that's that's not what we like. We don't like that. Donati hits the Castle Age. Lucifron still battling up towards the north, posturing. We're yet to see either of these players hit car or hit Imperial Age just yet, but just as I say that, you know what's coming. Is it going to be Swabia? It, it's got to be Swabia, right? Like, there's no two ways about it. He has to go Swabia. It's Swabia. Okay. Now, the reason why I say that is because Elsbach is unironically really good in this game mode. Uh, just because of that damage reduction, it means that there's really no chance of being sniped. But speaking of chances of getting sniped, have a look at that right there. What do you think the chances are that that gets sniped? I'm going to say 0 0.1. Recurring, of course. That's 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 a joke. It's not recurring. Town Center going to be going down. But remember, Anatand does not have to allow himself to be tethered down by landmarks. Do not... Landmarks are an ancient concept. Do not be tethered to them. Free yourself from the landmark. Even if the landmarks go down, Anatan stays alive because the king lives. It all comes down to the king. But I will say right now, Kaspar is in a very dominant position here and it's looking very tough for Anatan. And we can see that with that town center going down, that's going to be the first of the landmarks. Age up comes through. The Swabia begins printing its villagers. Up towards the north side. We already see Louis... Uh, excuse me, Louis, how long have you been Imperial? Uh, we can probably cross-reference the village accounts. Okay, so you've actually just only reached Imperial yourself. I'll accept it. All right. Knight numbers starting to look good. Keep in mind, you're playing up against the French with access to knights in the, in the Feudal Age. Makes it a little bit easier for them to fight on. We can see the knights doing a great job to chase away. Manganel continues rolling through. Knights are going to be able to pick it up. Attacks up towards the north side as well. We've got elite knights up against only only tier one knights. Upgrades are surely coming through. But you can see that the knight, the lancers on the south side having a field day. Meanwhile, Don and Divine just camping it out in the corners. Having a having an absolute fine time. And now Lucifron. Still defending, still holding on. The farmland of the Arkan. He's doing a great job. Of keeping himself alive, but if that Regnitz goes down, he's going to be in trouble. Not only do the relics drop on the ground and the potential to pick them up is there. There's plenty of prelates here. The elite upgrade still not through for Lucifron. A little bit of a mistake here from the Spaniard. And now that Regnitz Cathedral is really threatened, but the elite upgrade comes through just in time to save him. At the same time, down towards the south side, another keep continues coming down. We've got another king evacuation coming out. He's making a move with the king, but oh no, we've got trouble. We've got trouble, the Frenchman. He's going to get caught out of position at the same time towards the north. The Regnitz, it looks like Lucifron might be in trouble. Louis MT coming in from that top side, and now we've got real trouble for Anatan as that king realizes. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Wallalo, wallalo, wallalo. He manages. Is he going to get any? He doesn't. King back tries to throw it in an outpost. He needs something. Keep the king alive. But no. Casper comes through and it looks like the king. Oh, he goes down and he get, he loses it out. Another wallalo in the north. He's holding on for dear life. Lucifron manages to keep control of the relics. But is he going to keep control of the base? Oh my lord. Things are going terrible right now. All over this map, there's so much action. The Regnitz has gone down. Lucifron manages to keep himself alive. He holds onto the relics, but he does lose the Regnitz. And that's going to hurt him significantly. With that, has the reduced uh, income from those relics. So it's not as big as it once was. And now we see Don pushing out. Keep in mind, Don's got a kill at the moment. Anatan had a kill. Casper's uh, now got a kill. Everybody's getting kills. We're going to have to keep track of them. And keep in mind, at this same time, we've got Mr. Merlin, who is sitting ready to cap 
capture any clips from these games if you think that any of them, potentially any of the snipes, warrant a... Um, a, a special prize. Keep in mind, we've got those five special categories where we're going to be giving out special prizes. $1,000 for each one of them, such as King Snipe. Uh, we've got... What have we got? We've got the, the best uh, Sacred Victory, the best Wonder Victory, uh, the best... I think it's the, be the best Domination, the best Comeback, all that good stuff. If you see any highlights, make sure you check it out. All right. Chukunu starting to push out. I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm reading my own Twitch chat at the same time. Mangadel shot from the bottom side, saying, "Give us, give us the chat." I'm pretty sure you guys have got the chat. It's just that there there is no chat happening right now. That's it. Chukunu gonna get chased away. Plus seven range attack here. Up against, he's got the plus two on the ranged armor. That's gonna give him plenty of space. Trying his best to, to kite back. Up towards the north, though. Knight Mass continuing to build. Louis up to 37 knights. Compared to Lucifer only on the 27 for the moment. All right, we're going to follow along with these units as I just switch over my monitor screen here. So at, at this point, if you do see chat on the... Or if you, you see... Or what you're seeing on the screen should be the chat if there is any chat. So if there's no chat... Then there's just no talking. Everybody's very focused. Hyper focus, but oh, speaking of hyper focus, where is that king? Knights are making their way through the base. I don't I don't actually know where the king is. Is he on the run? Is he in a keep? Maybe you know what? He probably he probably knows where the king is. Those are villagers. And now all of a sudden breaking out, we've got fully upgraded knights. Well, I say fully upgraded, they're not fully, they're elite knights. They've got their biology upgrade. Towards the north, the knight numbers continue building. Don now adding in plenty of lances. And we can see it's English Knights finally breaking out this whole time. Someone has been booming it up. King, nice and safe down towards his south side. It's an elite king. Keep that in mind. I think he... Did he use his movement speed yet? Doesn't look like it. But look at this. Divine on the move. The consequence of not going for a, a nice and safe keep defense. You can see Divine's kept his beautifully safe at the back here. And now... You've got real trouble as this king looks to try and escape. Knights, they're, 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 they're on the way. They're on the way. Up towards the north, though. Regnitz Cathedral. Looks like it did get repaired up. Emergency repairs. Oh, it's oh, it's not inf influence. Oh, no. It should be an influence now. No, it's not. King Snipe. King Snipe coming through. Rest in peace, little guy. Oh, he walls. Is he walling out the king? He wants to try and get it in on the other side. He's going to throw a gate down. King is on the move. Go, King. Use your movement speed. Juke. He jukes left. He throws down. What's that? Is that the movement speed? Why are his hands glowing? I don't know why the hands are glowing. He's trying to get it, get it out. But Casper, uh, can he get it to the outpost? Go. Oh, he gets it in the outpost. But is it going to make a difference? I don't think it's going to make a difference. There's way too many knights here. There's way too many knights. Meanwhile, Don's still just booming it up over on the east side of the map. Fire Lance is starting to come through for him. And the king will go down. Divine assassinates Casper. And then there were four. Meanwhile, in the north of the map, those numbers continue to build. Bombard is out. Louis up against Lucifron. The economy is pretty even. Four relics apiece for each of these guys. Village account, 112 versus 114. They've keep, kept each other locked in battle this entire, this entire game. And now we can see Divine very happily camping it up. He's got that enclosure technology. More attacks coming through. And now Divine begins turning his attention. Where does Divine go next? He's just massing up knights completely. He's on 41 knights. That's all he's making. Just knights. I love it. For a game mode like this, there's no better reason to do it. More attacks coming through. Bombard needs to try and keep it alive. Villagers coming out. Going to be able to repair it. Another knight going to come in. Tries to make his way around. Cannon in placement. Helping out. At the same time, the knight numbers continuing to look good. Louis up about 10 knights. And the Bombard stays alive. Don. Chilling out on that east corner. Keep in mind, he has succeeded so far. He's had one kill. So he's up to 250 pop. Divine's also now going to be up to 250 pop. But we've got to fight the fight of the century. Knights on knights on knights. I tell you what, how many knights are we going to see in this game? How many lances are there going to be? They talk about Age of Siege. They talk about Age of Keeps. But have they ever talked about Age of Knights? Because Lucifer, he's in trouble. I love the way that he, it's never a full commit either. He's always able to keep some of them alive. 
Still managing to fight in this little corridor. Really good for him. Enables him to get those reinforcements through. Oh, Lord. Don Artie. Somebody made the Don angry. Not really. He's just hunting. He's looking for blood. He says, well, I've got a corner. You've got a corner. We've all got corners. And interestingly, no one's yet taken the sacred site. But Don's got an idea. A little bit of an idea. Divine starts massing up. Villagers beginning to move out. Divine with 950 stone in the bank here. Don moving over on that east side. He's looking really solid. What a first game. What a cracker of a game that we've had for you. The first one in the octagon. It's great to be back. 30 minutes through this game. And I tell you what, there's a lot more action in these games, but I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. I, I want to know what you think. If you're watching this on Twitch, you let me know in Twitch chat. If you're watching this on YouTube, let me know on YouTube. But now those knights begin to crunch up against one another. The relic gets stolen away. And Louis says, thanks for the memories, even though they weren't so great. But look at the sprinkled emplacement trying to fire down on the prelate. He manages to get it. The relic drops to the ground. It's still in play. And look at all of the prelates coming from Louis. He's like, get that relic immediately. But there's trouble in paradise right now. Fire Lancers have got their upgrades and they are heading straight towards the base. The King, he's unprotected. The King is on the move. Where does he move with this King? The King is moving forward to a position. He's got nowhere safe for that King. The King is completely exposed. The Fire Lancers are making it their way towards the King. Unprotected King right now. You've got, you've got to put a wrapper on that bad boy and indeed he does. Heads towards the keep. Looks to try and keep it safe. Boiling oil, not yet through yet. No reinforced defenses. And now looks to just focus down the town center. Excuse me, Don. Did you forget for a second what game mode you're playing, sir? I'll have you know that this is Outback Octagon. And now Don remembers. He's like, oh, that's right. I don't need to kill the town center. I just got to kill where the king is. And that's exactly what he looks to do. King, now under pressure. Fire Lancers looking to siege down this keep. Emergency repairs is in play. But where do the Louis looks for it? He needs to hit that button quickly. There we go. Emergency repairs come through. Cannon emplacement. Is it here? No, he's only got the sprinkled emplacement. It looks like the keep is going to go down. If the keep goes down, where's the king? The king's on the ground. The king is on the ground. Comes through. Louis looking to try and defend the Chukunu firing down. He is actually just focusing down this king. And Louis tries to keep the king alive. Needs to hit the movement speed. He pops the movement speed. He breaks through with breakneck speed. Try to keep the king alive. Run, Louis, run. Run for your life, Louis. And he gets into the outpost. No, he ignores the outpost. Continues on the way. Heading back to the town center. Louis, he does it, the madman. He keeps himself alive and he cleans up the attack. He stays in the game. An absolute god. Louis lives. What a clutch live right there from Louis. That right there, that's, you gotta clip it, you gotta ship it, that's number one. That's gotta be something right there. What a live from Louis. I didn't expect to see it like that, but that was incredible coming out from the man himself. What a play. And now the cavalry looks to come and take over this game. So much cavalry everywhere. Don now beginning to add more cannons to the mix. Oh my lord. Whew. Louis MT, how do you do it like that? If, if that ain't going to build you some fans, I don't know what will. That was movement speed out the wazoo. Wasn't it beautiful? The way he looped around those Shukunu. Oh, it was incredible. And now, Louis, you've made an enemy out of me, buddy. Don is in trouble. Louis looks towards his neighbor and says, Hey, buddy, peace. Peace for a moment. I've got a new target. Where does Don keep the king? That's going to be the question. Surely Don's got the king safe in a keep somewhere. There it is. There it is. <laughs> I love Don. <laughs> Don with the triple defense back here. The Great Wall Gatehouse and the double the double keep. Just to keep him safe. Just in case. Just in case. Oh, poor Don. Oh, I, I, I love it. Oh, what a, what a beautiful play right there from Louis, giving him the runaround. That is quite literally inspired by GUA. That is the definition of the runaround. Absolute beautiful stuff right there. All right, does, does Louis learn from his lesson? So what does he need to do? He needs to evac the king out, heal it back up with his prelates, throw down a keep in this corner of the map and make sure it's completely stonewalled in, and then you're fine. Poor man's keep coming through on this top side. Lucifron starting to make a push on Louis, and Louis caught between a rock and a hard place. See, this is where it comes down to, you know, even, even if you've managed to get yourself a nice little corner, if you find yourself stuck between two players... Well, it doesn't matter if it's five minutes. It doesn't matter if it's 35 minutes. You're still going to have trouble. And now Don comes in for round number two. 
but quickly decides that round number two is probably best served a little bit later in the evening. More outposts moving forward. I like the way that he's pushing forward with these outposts. Night numbers starting to increase. Gold starting to be an issue. No one even looking for this sacred site just yet. Don starting to throw down a couple of outposts. Keep in mind these outposts do have a special unique technology, allowing them to heal any wall that's damaged nearby, including these walls down here, if they're close enough. Knight's now looking to repel, and Louis definitely feeling a little bit boxed in. He's on 101 villagers, started to dwindle. A stone wall looks to come down, but... Oh, Louis, it's not looking good. It's not feeling good right now. The villagers, they try and get it up. But unfortunately, it's broken through. The Bombard's going to be making their way as well. Where's that king? Oh, the, the king is on the move. The king is on... Where is that king? I'm a little bit concerned. I don't see the king. I need to find that big circle on the map. I don't actually know where the king is. I'm just hoping Louis knows where the king is. Louis, where's your king, buddy? Attack from both sides now. Louis in trouble. King's inside the keep. There's not a lot of siege on this side. There's a single battering ram. That's a, a triplet of battering rams. The knights holding on. Knight, knights are going to be absolutely fine up against these fire lances. It's the hand cannoneers in the back he's got to worry about. Keep goes down. Louis getting 2v1. The consequence of getting caught between a rock and a hard place is that you often find yourself squeezed when they decide to move in on each other. Because there is an earthquake in, in town and its name is Don Hardy, baby. He is looking to roll over the top of Louis and claim himself another point. Sacred site still uncontested in the middle. No trade coming through just yet. A keep as villagers move around the edge of the map. And second layers of walls come through. Battering rams making their way towards this position. Louis trying to get a cannon emplacement through. Keep in mind, double cost on cannon emplacements mean these are expensive, even with the bonus from the Holy Roman Empire. Bombard's going to look to try and defend this position. But there's additional bombards and a culverin through here as well. And Louis is on his last legs. The relic comes out. He begins moving it on. There's not a lot of knights here. He's down to 18 knights. The keep is going down. More villagers get pulled. Emergency repairs is off cooldown for another 15 seconds. Fire Lance is coming through. He wants a second shot at it. Don's asking for it. Fire Lancers continue moving around the top side. He surely knows where that king is. His eyes upon it. And the relic gets picked up. Does he go for a wallalol? He needs something to keep himself in the game here. Bombard saying, no wallalol for you. And Lucifron continues to push upon this keep. It's the only one that Louis got. He's got a market in the corner. Louis, not a market. That's not what you needed. The wallalo, the wallalo to save it. Uh, units move into the circle. Bombard's not going to be able to fire it down. He doesn't convert anything. Keeps himself alive for a few more seconds. More villagers get pulled. But Louis, he's run out of stone. He's minus three. Oh, there's not enough units here to defend him. Poor Louis. Poor Louis. He took the corner. He thought he'd be safest in this entire time. Below his enemy, Divine has just been biding his time. Sitting, waiting, holding. Sitting at 250 pop. He could have come in at any time and caused all or so much havoc for his enemy, but the king's escaped to the top side. The king is on the run. He chills. He waits. And now the two armies that came to kill Louis begin to kill each other. They don't realize that it's, it's the classic Spider-Man meme. But Fire Lancers are heading towards the king. And indeed, looks like they have located him. The king makes his way. Get to the chopper, king. Get to the chopper. Uh, you could actually throw him up on top of a stone wall. He'd be okay. Hand cannoneers. Hand cannoneers. The knights together. The hand cannoneers obliterated. Don Hardy is going to be assassinating Louis MT. And Louis goes down. And three remain in the game. Don Hardy taking out a second. And pushing himself up to 300 maximum population. Louis could run, but he could not hide. Numbers really starting to build now for Don. 216 population. And this is where it starts to get tough for Lucifron. Lucifron has not got a kill all game. He fought up against Louis. It was a valiant fight. A strong effort. But in the end, he sits on 200 population. Meanwhile, Don managed to collect a kill. Namely, Recon and Louis. And now sits on a maximum of 300 population. At this point in the game, Divine could probably point at Don and say, Hey, uh, Lucifron? I, th I think we should get him. What do you think? But Divine's not going to do it. Divine's just chilling. He's having a great time. He's up to 30k food. King's alive in the Berkshire Palace. He's biding his time. 
over. Just farming up. He's, he's just taking some gold. He's already collected a kill this game. So he's on that 250 pop. 193 villagers. 14,000 gold in the bank. If you've ever seen somebody play for the late game, this is it. But I think we have our first move towards the central sacred site. And now... Now we get a chance to talk about how the points are awarded in the event of a sacred site victory. In the event you win with a sacred site, you get the same amount of points that you would if you won normally. However, for every enemy player that's in the game, when you capture the sacred site, you get an additional point. So if Don was to capture this sacred site, He'd get an additional two points if he was to win because there's two additional players in the game when he captures it initially. Even if these two players take out each other or one of them takes out the other and he's just left going, oh, well, it's, it's a one versus one. He still gets the additional point. Now, what is going on towards this north side? Lucifron is very anchored up here and I don't know why. Oh, he's picking up relics. Oh, he's stealing away the relics. Three relics in the regnets. Now... Uh, th this is actually a bug that does happen, and it might happen here. If, if you kill the Regnitz Cathedral, and I know that this happens in multiplayer, if you kill the Regnitz Cathedral, the relics won't drop onto the ground. Man, it, it looks so weird. It looks like time has stopped in this base. Does it not? It, it looks like it's a, it's a movie. That's me. Like record scratch. That's me. Oh... Oh, they, they, they're clearly teaming. Clearly teaming. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, we got a problem in paradise. Where's the king? Uh, has Don located the king? That's the question. Because he's now moving through the base. Uh, <laughs> sacred site is taken. And th this is where the, that that this is where it becomes difficult. The king, he's looking to try and secure it. He's got the keep in the back of the base. The stone wall's going to come up. Emergency repair is going to get thrown down on the first of the keeps. And within the blink of an eye, it gets taken out. And look at this. All, all these... I, I don't know exactly what was going on here. But Don is maxed out. He's 300 out of 300. Divine begins pushing towards the center. He's only got a handful. I say a handful. Only got a handful of knights. And now the Chinese player's worst enemy. Stone walls. What do we do here, guys? Mm, I don't know. All right. I guess we just turn around. Because the Bombard comes forward, but you just kill the Bombard, and then you can't do anything, right? Like, if the Bombard dies, the push dies. That's what I love about the Stone Walls. It's like, you can try and snipe the King, but the reality is it's not going to happen. Meanwhile, in the center of the map, Don Arty puts a few keeps down and says, actually, I don't mind going for the victory here. First of the Stone Walls coming down here as well for Divine. He's going to be looking to keep his Trebs safe behind him. Still the Fire Lancers running around. Ideally, what Don needs to do is throw down some battering rams. He needs to throw down, uh, research the uh, the upgrade for the battering rams. And just get like five battering rams out and push this position. That's the best thing he can do in this bot. So, Treb's making their way forward. Divine. Oh, Lord. Divine has deleted his entire villager population. He's on to 82 now. I shouldn't say entire. He's down to 82. So why is he making this stone wall? This stone wall is made so that the Trebs can sit safely behind it and fire at the keeps. That way, Springwoods can't kill them. And then he's going to come up and move another, make another stone wall and just keep moving them forward. Another Bombard rolling through. Still trying to take out the King back here. Lucifron struggling. Caught in a long fight up against Louis. And unfortunately for Don, it's an unprotected... He, he left the Bombard hanging. Oh, that's, that's an interesting strategy. I haven't seen that in a while. When was the last time we saw this? Uh, it would have been August 2020, 2022 on Mongolian Heights. It's a, it's a video called This Is Absolutely Disgusting. And I love it. Oh, I love it. And then the, now the battering rams are coming down. It looks like he doesn't have the Imperial upgrade for the battering rams. But you can see all those units moving towards Don's army. The one saving chance that they've got for the battering rams have been made. The hand cannon is going to start firing down upon them. And Don continues to hold the middle. Seven minutes remain. 
The push continues coming through. The first of the keeps about to go down and the trebs sitting. Oh my God, that is a huge army. <laughs> oh my God, 177 mil, mil pop. That's a lot of units. And the battering rams have made it through. The numbers here of units for Don have really dwindled. We can see just, it's, it's been absolutely ludicrous how he's managed to keep it alive for this long. I'm honestly impressed. I, I thought Don would have had him a lot sooner than this. And you can see him rallying out the troops. If we take a look at Don's base, he's got a, he's got a few production facilities, I guess you could say. A, a, a few, a couple, handful, one or two. Sacred site under pressure in the middle of the map. Don, Don not even worried about it. He's going for the kill. Whether he's going to get it is a different story. It looks like emergency repairs is not connected to this keep. But it's not going to matter. Don's got way too many units here. Lucifron. Completely surrounded. Three kills for Don Artie. As the keep goes down and the king. He's got one chance. The king. He looks like he surrenders. Indeed he does. The king goes down. Lucifron has been assassinated. And now, two players remain. Don in the east. Divine in the west. Three kills against one. 350 pop for Don against 250 pop for Divine. Don already close to maxing out again. Up to 307 pop. All units to the sacred site. Men at arms. He's looking to push through. Needs to stand on that sacred site. Ne needs to kill all the units before he gets on that sacred site. Five minutes remain. Don looking for the sacred victory. The Trebs fire down. And the sacred site now under pressure. Don Artie says, you know what? Go for the sacred site. I don't care. I got bigger fish to fry. I'm looking at you, buddy. I'm looking at you, buddy. Don ignores the sacred site. He's like, uh, you know what? I don't even care about the sacred site. And, and look at this. I think Divine realizes, is it a bait? He's, he's thinking, it, wh wh where is Don? Why isn't he fighting me? What's going on here? He's not even looking to challenge the sacred site. 10 men at arms would cap that sacred site. Maybe he's just slow playing it. Probably a smart move, but now all of a sudden he's going to realize, okay, we've got to make a move. We've got to make a move. What do we do? What do we do? Does he look for a, uh, does he throw a keep down in the corner down here and stonewall that in? Does he keep mobile? Does he maybe bring the king to the center of the map? Because the, <laughs> the battering rams are coming down. Don Artie approaching 350 po population at this point. The Don taking great advantage of his expertise on the Chinese Civ this game. 92 spearmen, 43 hand cannoneers, 116 villagers, more than 200 military pop. Don is in prime position. The last keep remains. And Don's been a, doing a great job of keeping those units away from where they need to be. But now they evacuate Don with a beautiful strategy. A lot, not even a last ditch effort. A great distraction strategy. And now begins to push through those second layers of walls. Keep in mind, these guys did have their court architects through the battering rams on the way towards the king. He says, wakey, wakey, hands off snakey. It's time. Come on. You've been hiding in there for 48 minutes. Let's play. And the sacred sites get neutralized in the center. No sacred victory at this point in play. But there is something much more dangerous than a sacred victory in... He's now looking to contest it himself. Wall's coming up, but I, I don't think Divine has appreciated the, the current situation. You know, the worst part is he can't even go for a runner with the king. There's no gate in the wall. He can't get the king out. He can't actually delete these walls either because if he, he he can't do it because the, um, the, the fire lances are too close. You can't delete stone walls. This is good game right here. This is good game right here. Unless these units somehow get cleaned up. He's going to try and hold it. Don Artie is pushing through. The battering rams beginning to make their first attacks on the corner. Working on the first segment of wall. Men at arms moving back. Hand cannon is looking to clean it up as well. Divine holding on. The battering rams making it through. But they're stuck. There's a roadblock. The Chukunu say, let me in, buddy. Let me in. 
battering rams somehow make it through. All of the battering rams now looking to focus down that Barkshire Palace. But the reinforcements are here. You called for the cavalry. Here they are. The cavalry's finally arrived. The hand cannoneers have made it. And the Barkshire lives. The Barkshire lives. This is not scripted. This is not scripted. This is absolute insanity. If you don't know his name, you know it now. It is Divine DFP. And he is an absolute Giga Chad. Even though he's not playing the Holy Roman Empire. What an absolute Giga Chad hold. He lives. Don Artie within inches of victory. The Barkshire Palace less than half health. And now Don says, all right, well, I guess we'll do it the old fashioned way then. How long does this game go between these two players? Because there's a real chance that it goes for a long, long time. Don thought he had his chance. He went for the snipe. It was a valiant effort. But in the end, DFP held. But now those numbers of Fire Lancers are starting to increase. He spotted out the Trebs. Losing these Trebs is going to hurt DFP a lot. Big damage comes through. Knights there as well, taking a lot of damage. Spears moving up with, with the Palace Guards. Hand Cannoneers in the back as well. Keep in mind that Don's got that 100 pop advantage over Divine. But at the moment, it's not really represented when it comes to their actual pops. 240 pop against 238. Don's going to get some Vils out. But speaking of Vils out, 45 villages out for Divine. He's maxed on the army. Oh my god, that's a huge army. Oh my god, that's a huge army. Now, has he got his battering ram upgrade? Surely he's got the battering ram upgrade. It's so quiet in his base, isn't it? Siege... Yeah, okay. Oh, no, that's a dead elm tree. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, he's got the upgrade. Uh, sir, that's an, el that's an elm tree. A dead one. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, he's got the upgrade though. So he's going to be fine. And now, a true battle of the Titans. 270 pop versus 250. Don Arty falls back, realizing that's a huge army. I can't deal with that. Dio Favente Perennis pushes in on the Don and looks to take that sacred site. Now, keep in mind, the point difference between a sacred victory in this situation versus an elimination victory is non-existent. There is no difference... It is exactly the same. So there's no incentive for DFP to just hold this sacred site and just camp it unless he thinks he can't finish on the other, the good old-fashioned way. DFP now pushing forward with 200 military. You wanted a big battle? How's this? How is this for size? And Don now begins to push through. You can hear the sounds of the hand cannoneers on the back line opening up against the fire lancers, eating them alive. And the sacred site now taken for Divine. 95 hand cannoneers on the battlefield right now for Divine. Meanwhile, Don. 29 Jukunu. That's not going to do. The best unit. The best hand cannoneer there is. Arguably the English hand cannoneer. The only difference is probably the, probably the, the extra range that you get from the Chinese one. Maybe then. Maybe that's justifiable. Now, there are relics that you could always go and look to snag away from your enemy. And we can actually see the case right here. The three relics still locked inside this dead Regnitz Cathedral. Divine's on 3k gold income. How is he on 3k gold income? That's a lot of gold. He must be gathering gold. Excuse me. He must be gathering gold somewhere. It's probably down in the south. But a massive battle unfolding in the middle of the map. 250 pop against 255. But keep in mind, so much of that is military for Divine. Don Arty losing down population very quickly. Down to 88 population, getting completely swung. Oh my lord, it is absolute destruction. The English army. Let there be no question. It is the king of the late game. You thought it was the French? You were mistaken. Long live English late game. Despite a, two, a 100 population advantage here, Don Arty is having trouble with Divine. He's trying his best to hold on. The numbers are starting to build for the Don. 
And this, this, <laughs> this is where it starts to get good at this point in the game. You know, uh, we, were, we were talking about the rules. We were like, yeah, yeah, this could work, that could work. And something that people flagged is they're like, you know what, maybe 50 population is too much. If anything, this game, this has just provided me the evidence that 50 population is perfectly fine. It is manageable because you've got 250, or you've, you've got plenty of population space for Don and he is not capable of using it. Not at the moment. I mean, he's got to build more vills. That, that's the thing, right? Like he has to climb on that village account. But then Divine has said, well, I, I played the early game. I played the smart game. I just sat in my base and boomed. And now I've got all of this, all of these resources that are built up. And I'm happy sitting on 200 population. Oh, that's, oh, that's Don with 3000 gold a minute. Oh, no wonder. So is that, what is that? Imperial officials together with, he doesn't have relics, does he? I don't think he's got the relics. It's got to be just Imperial officials, right? Just the tax. Hand cannon is now firing off. The hand cannoneer of the Chinese up against the hand cannoneers. The nest of bees firing off from the back line. Bombard's got to be careful. They fall back away on that east side. The palace guards are going to hold it down on the front. At the same time, the hand cannoneers need to fall back. There's way too many melee units in here. Nest of bees, nest of bees, nest of bees firing off. More damage coming through. Don needs to get into more nest of bees. The meta arms just absolutely eating them alive. And that sacred site is not going anywhere. Divine, not even close to getting knocked out here. Don down to 189 population. He just can't, he cannot break this English army. It's huge. It's massive. And this is the consequence of critical mass. Once you reach this point, there's no going back. Don, honestly, at this point, Don needs to pull out like seven nest of bees. It's the only way he can do it. Seven nest of bees. And I, then I believe in the Don. But he's running out of time. Six minutes remain for Divine. You know, the part that I think hurts the most for Don is he probably could have just looked to contest his enemy in the middle with all of these keeps earlier on instead of going to the snipe. And it would have been a different story. Yes, sir. All the upgrades have come through yes, sir. for Divine. You can see he's fully upgraded on these men-at-arms. And Bombard slowly pushing forward. Does Don look for more Nesta Bees? Indeed he does. Clock Tower Nesta Bees rolling in off the blocks. Couple trebs rolling out as well. Siegeworks is through for Don. Actually, is that Siegeworks? Yeah, it's Siegeworks. Those are Clock Towers. So many Hand Cannoneers here. Still sitting on, on 74 Hand Cannoneers. The Trebs now looking to deal with the keep here as well. Bombard's trying their best to manage to escape, but he just gets eaten alive. I don't think th there's a chance for Don. I don't think there's a chance for him. The army's way too big. Divine's so far ahead. He's just maxed out nonstop. Keeps bu building additional outposts, brings them forward. He's got that network of Citadel's bonus. He pushes Don back. He says, I don't care that you've got 350 pop space, mate. Back to the pavilion with you. And Divine, in the first game of Outback Octagon 2, looks for a massive upset against a player with triple the amount of kills. More than 100 population space over the top. And he holds the sacred site. Doesn't even wall it. Doesn't even need to wall it. He just says, that's fine. I'll just make military. I'll just make a few military units. I'll be fine. Longbow is now starting to come out as well. Realizing that he doesn't have a lot of gold. It's fine. I'll just, I'll start making longbows instead. Villages down to the south. Majority of the resources on this map have been pretty well exhausted. Don. Making one last ditch attempt. Go for it, Don. Oh, he's, he's going for it. Divine doesn't have the resources to do a delete. Oh, Don. Oh, Don. Oh, Don, go for it. Please, Don. You got four minutes. I believe. He's going for the snipe. He's going for the snipe. There's 3,500 3, health. It's double walled up, double stone walled. He managed to double wall the front as well. Don's making moves. Does Divine realize? Surely Divine realizes. There's got to be a point where Divine's like, there's nothing challenge me, challenging me on this sacred site. Where are they? Siege workshops coming in. Don, not a lot of resources in the bank. Five siege workshops coming down. Don sees that he has an out. Three minutes left for Don, but it's such a long walk. Even if he was there already, it would take him so long to get through all these walls. Did he leave the run until too late? 
huge force from Divine. If he gets even a whiff of what Don is up to right now, it's all over Red Rover. Don's got one la last attempt. Missing a lot of upgrades here. I tell you what, this would have been nice to have. Reusable barrels, reload drills. Poor Don. Where are these units headed? That's the question. Look at this. Look at this. Divine knows. He knows something's up. He says, I, I, I know what it is. I know what it is. He's trying to, he's trying to kill me. He's trying to snipe my king. Look at the size of this army. Look how big it is. Does he move? Does he realize? He spots it out right now. The outpost is up. And now Divine gets confirmation. Don's going for it. But there's only two minutes left. Don doesn't have time. Even if the Rams sprinted over towards this Barkshire Palace, he'd barely have any time left. Hand cannoneers. Not many of them left. Divine's still not moving though. Is Divine that confident? At this point, Divine could probably just run the king. Just just put him put the put the motors on. Turn the NOS on. And now Divine begins reacting to Don. He says, oh, 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 you're going for a snipe. Well, there's two minutes left. I mean, technically, yeah, there's time. Let's see what he's able to do. Don grouping everything together. I love it. You know, the, these fire lances could be here at the front, but even if they're here at the front, they don't do anything until they get through on the backside. This is where it starts to get tense. Divine making his way down, bringing horsemen over. Only the veteran horsemen. If he can block with the horsemen, he'll be fine. 90 seconds to go. It was a valiant effort, Don. I'm, I'm going to call it right here, Don. How does he possibly... Unless he unless he ran palace guards in and built like six rams right on the front line, he just doesn't have the time. He just he left it too late. That was it. I mean, I, I think he underestimated how big this map was. It's an absolutely huge map. By the way, can I just remark on the fact that Imperial officials still have bigger circles? Even in this game mode. So they, they're kind of like kings in a way. Huh, there you go. Don now. Pushing through. 50 seconds remain. And the defense has arrived. Don was so close earlier on. To a victory. He's got 130 fire lancers. Is that fire lancers or horsemen? They're horsemen. My bad. 130 horsemen. 15 battering rams. He makes it with 30 seconds left to the front gate. And now the troops finally arrive. Divine's also back here. Plenty of... Plenty. The Vils are coming through as well. And Don Arty. A valiant attempt, my friend. But unfortunately, there is no chance. The Sacred Side attempt. Not gonna matter. With five seconds to go, Divine DFB is the winner of the first Outback Octagon 2 game. Ladies and gentlemen, it was an absolute pleasure. A beautiful game coming out from these players. DFP does it. He scores a massive victory here. We take a look now at the timelines and remember all those that came before us. The good old days. Take a look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Absolutely ludicrous. How many villagers got deleted right there. Divine playing the late game immaculately. And it just goes to show it doesn't matter how many people you knock out. Well, there's always going to be one guy who weighs a little bit less, but punches a little bit harder. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll catch you guys in the next one.